he'll play queen d4 straight away. But That's 10 another seconds move. for Prague and no queen d4. So queen d4 okay, not so sacrificing but just away. attacking the rook on a7. And now there's an incredibly powerful move for black. Knight f6 covering the threat against g7 and counterattacking the rook. That move seems to win the game on the spot. Do you think knight f6 is an, uh, an obvious move? Yes. Well, it's not obvious, and I think Magnus might be tempted by rook takes a4 or c3. No, knight f6. No. There he, he goes. The world champ he's the world champion for a very good reason, Fiona. And Prague had to take on g7. That was a big chance for him. There was he indeed a chance. Now, knight after knight f6, the black king suddenly is safe. Are there no more sacrifices here at all well, possible? You can play knight takes h6 and then queen takes f6, but the end game is going to be completely lost because black is going to shove this pawn down to c3, and then he's going to win the pawn on b3 and he's going to have connected passers. And unfortunately, Prague knows all about facing connecting passers that are He made his move there with two seconds on the two clock, seconds. Dania, but uh, knight C3. b6, c3 is going to come shut down that bishop and... Um, c3 resigns. Yeah. C3 resigns because after the bishop moves, you'll be able to take the rook. And there, there you go, C3 I mean, that's, that's is on the board. Uh, we're on move 30, uh, but that doesn't matter any longer uh, because Magnus has found a couple of precise moves now. Prague may be missing a small chance. Objectively, the position was still bad, but at least there was a, a fighting chance after sacrificing on G7, but now Magnus has everything under control. And this is, that's the thing. There were several moments in this game where Prague didn't pull the trigger. Knight g5, and in the end, bishop takes g7. I can guarantee you is a move, Fiona, that he would have made against the vast majority of players. And I know I'm repeating that, but it's mm. just important to recognize how insane of an effect Magnus has on people. It, it, Mag, playing Magnus changes you. And here Magnus has to play knight takes d5. And after knight takes a7, c takes b2. Magnus has decided to take instead with the queen. Um, Which should I think is also winning. Be equally good, yes. Yeah, everything wins. I mean, white, white, white has more hanging pieces than black. And at the end, white, black's going to take the bishop on b2, and that pawn's going to promote, so it's over. That's yeah. also good. Queen d5, uh, Prague. What? He took, he exchanged so queens. Takes. He's going to resign here because knight takes a7, c takes b2, and knight c3 is unstoppable. Yeah, it's I over. think we are seeing the final moments here of the game. Uh, Prague okay. took on a7, Magnus taking on b2, and yeah. Rook b1, rook e2 is, might be thrown in, rook b1, rook e2, and then knight c3, and it's over. Yeah, rook e2. Yeah, and there he goes. Rookie 2 is on the board and will probably uh, see a hand check now. Yeah, I mean, White can also try knight d4, and Magnus could even go knight c3 in this position, <laughs> just showcasing total domination. Knight takes yeah. c2, knight takes b1, then the knight calmly steps back and promotes the pawn. Wow, Actually, what a time scramble. What a play by Magnus. So accurate. Magnus is such a, a beast. You let him back in, and there is the resignation by Pragnananda. And th some visible relief on the face of Magnus Carson. Relief, but also we see this quite That's often. A I think. Magnus. Magnus is not That's completely Magnus satisfied <laughs> with the game he played. Was he maybe apologizing for pressing the clock? <laughs> I don't know. Or like. <laughs>